the desert, money doesn't talk, it shouts. Here, people demand the best out of life, and they want it now. Fast cars, great beaches, jet skis, fabulous architecture, and some quirky sports. At least you don't have to buy an embarrassing pom-pom hat. Until now, sand dune skiing has been the only way you could ski in Dubai, but not for long. The latest grand project is to build a ski resort with real snow right here in the desert. The kings of construction will turn the dream of making snow in the desert into reality. Chief Executive Phil Taylor he has to deliver the biggest and best indoor ski resort in the world and do it on time and on budget. Head of construction, Tim Kelly. He's responsible for building the world's largest real snow ski dome in the world's unlikeliest location. Long-suffering production director, Stuart Ingram, the troubleshooter. He's paid by the owners to protect their interests. He has to watch the calendar and count the pennies. Uncompromising engineer Malcolm Clulo. He's cracked the secret of making real powder snow artificially, but he's never had to do it in a baking hot desert. Ski Dubai is a massive engineering project demanding solutions to some unprecedented problems. How do you lift a 3,000-ton section of ski slope 197 feet in the air? That's where eventually this has to end up. How do you build the world's biggest artificial ski slope in record time? Would it not have helped if we'd been told about this last week? The pressure on everyone now is just enormous. There's so much at stake. The temperature is unbearably hot. So apart from working in this horrendous heat, we've now got no electricity. They're nearly at breaking point. And if we don't open in time, there's huge penalties for everybody. This is the land of bling. Even though Dubai's oil is running out, its economy is booming. Dubai's rulers have encouraged the development of tourism. Tourists love to shop, and Dubai is the shopping mall capital of the Gulf. But how do you make your mall stand out from the others? The developers of Mall of the Emirates believe they have it cracked. This giant construction site covers 6.5 million square feet of desert. It'll offer two luxury hotels of 900 rooms, car parking for 7,000 cars, a 14-screen cinema, and this, Ski Dubai. Khalid and Yusuf Bin Lodge are part of Dubai's young elite and two of Ski Dubai's future customers. They can't wait to start snow skiing. But building a snow dome in a desert requires some very complicated technology. And three months before Ski Dubai is supposed to open, the kings of construction are running into difficulties. To keep the snow from melting, they've built a massive, sophisticated cooling system, a labyrinth of pipes filled with chemicals. But there's a problem. The chemicals are highly toxic. One of them, ammonia, is lethal. It's a very efficient refrigerant, but it can be explosive in certain concentrations. You have to take measures, A, to stop it leaking into the environment, and B, if it does leak into the environment, you limit that leak. You wouldn't want it filling that space with gas and, and asphyxiating and killing people. During routine inspections, Malcolm has become alarmed. There's more than 50 miles of pipe work on the site, and the quality of the welding looks to him substandard. 
If it is, the cooling system is a potential time bomb. Even if it can be fixed, Ski Dubai may not open on time, and its builders stand to lose millions of dollars. Competition between Dubai's malls to attract big spenders is intense. But how do developers make their mall stand out? The owners of the Mall of the Emirates have an answer. Build an alpine snow resort in the middle of the desert. Ski Dubai. Ski Dubai will have a curved slope 1,312 feet long. It'll be the world's longest indoor ski run using real snow technology. Other ski domes around the world are built the easy way. The owners find a nice steep slope and put a roof over the top. But there are no hills in Dubai, only sand dunes. So Ski Dubai is being built on stilts over the world's largest shopping mall outside North America, the third biggest in the world. But how do you recreate real mountain snow in an artificial indoor environment? Inventor Malcolm Clulo has cracked nature's code. And here's the proof. This is Xscape Snow Dome in Milton Keynes, UK, one of the world's best indoor ski slopes. Malcolm's groundbreaking technology has produced this snow. We wanted to make real snow but real snow grows in flight through the atmosphere and forms a crystal shape that you can recognize against a chart of different snow crystals. And there are more than 250 different kinds of snow. The Eskimos, in fact, have got more than 200 names for snow. In Milton Keynes, Malcolm's technology has been producing perfect powder snow for five years. This snow forms complex crystals in flight, just like the real thing. The flakes look, feel, and taste just like alpine snow. From these small guns, water is sprayed in a fine mist which forms a cloud. This vapor is then seeded with tiny invisible ice particles, only 10 microns thick. The particles are the nucleus around which the perfect snow crystals form. To keep the dome's 270,000 square feet at the right temperature, you need 10 megawatts of cooling capacity, with 24 coolers suspended from the ceiling. Temperatures inside Ski Dubai will be a constant 28 degrees Fahrenheit for skiing and 21 for snowmaking. And it all comes with a guarantee that eight inches of fresh powder will fall every night. That's around 30 tons. Here is, is equivalent to three football pitches, if that gives you an idea of the size of this, um, the, the space that we've created. We needed it completely column free, which is how you end up with this 80 meter span, which is phenomenal as a, as, a, as a size. And one of the things that I hope you can sort of quite see through here is this isn't a flat gradient or a level slope. This has got all variation of cambers, really aimed at making it feel like a real mountain would be. Ski Dubai will have five different slope gradients, including the world's first indoor black run. When covered with snow, this area of the slope will be 45 degrees. That's steep enough to force the most experienced skier into making jump turns. But with a run this steep, if you want to avoid a disaster, you need to come up with some novel engineering solutions. Just to this side, you can see one of our black runs, and it's actually being built in steps. And the reason is that if we don't build it in steps, the fear is that we'd actually have an avalanche with the snow sliding down the, uh, the hole of the piste. So really trying to be very careful, because when you're building at these gradients, you've got to consider factors like that. And it's, it's an example of how we're innovating the engineering of, of ski centers and indoor ski centers all the time. These problems are an engineer's nightmare and dream. Head of construction, Tim Kelly, is a man who takes pride in his work. This is a work of art, this. I mean, I, I, I just feel really, really sad. They're gonna, they're gonna cover up all the feet, you're never gonna see it, but just all the radial beams, the way it all comes together, the view you see of this, and the, and the, the expanse of this volume. It's me, this is unique, this. Oh, oh, oh. 
Most buildings are built from the ground up. The higher you go, the more scaffolding you need. Project director Stuart Ingram has decided to use a method that'll save time and money. One of the big hidden costs that you'll see on jobs of high, high, high structures or whatever else is the temporary works that are required to build it. And that was one of the big drivers that led us to push away from traditional construction to strand jack. Strand jacking means constructing a building on or close to the ground and then lifting it into its final position. This 300 foot section of ski slope is nearly complete. Today it's close to the ground, but not for long. Soon it'll be lifted 200 feet to form the upper section of the slope. What you can see from here is the big floor truss at the back there. That's where eventually this has to end up. So you can see the roof rafters at the top. Those roof rafters match the level of the end of that roof. So that all has to close up and, and some distance. You start to get the scale of it from here. These are the machines that'll hoist the load. Each hydraulic strand jack can lift 500 tons. The slope will have 16 jacks, four on each corner. They work by pulling these metal strands millimeter by millimeter. Hoisting this massive slab of concrete and steel will take two days. This is equivalent about the weight of 20 jumbo jets. To lift that up into the air, to control it, to position it exactly into the right place, making sure it fits. It's just a fantastic feat of engineering. Tim is already four weeks behind schedule, and the penalty payments for finishing late are huge. The pressure is on to lift the slope and move on to the next phase. Tim has to build a three-story car park under the slope, and soon. The final checks for the lift can start, but things aren't going according to plan. Tim has returned to his office. He's concerned that the weather is deteriorating. Should he call the operation off? On the weather forecast here, I don't know if you can see it. You can see here the wind speed in knots. And what we have here, which is concerning to us, is that sometime in the afternoon this evening is a peak before it starts to ease. The wind, the, the, the effect of the wind on the structure is something we've always been debating. It's something we've been nervous about. Yeah. You don't want something that heavy uncontrolled. You know, you're talking about 3,000 tonnes on an end of a rope. Mm. Yeah. You know, once it starts to swing, basically the thing will start moving like a pendulum. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. So, so decision is? Decision is we're tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, first, first thing. The strong winds arrive and a sandstorm develops. In Dubai, a sandstorm can last five days. Obviously, very disappointed the lift hasn't gone ahead today, but that's, that's better to be on the safe side. It's far better that we heed the warnings of the weather forecasters and the engineers and obviously call it to, for tomorrow now. But disappointing. The Strand Jack lift at Ski Dubai is held up by high winds, but work on the world's third largest shopping mall is progressing. Dubai-based entrepreneur Shariar Kojiste is looking forward to opening his extreme sports shop Rampage in the new mall of the Emirates. But there's still a lot of work to be done. Rampage is all about skate, surf, and snow. What's gonna happen is that the shop front is going to be uh, as though you're walking through a big pair of snow goggles. So you walk through the arch of the, the nose bridge, basically. Sharier has done his research and he knows his potential customers. With these indoor ski parks, uh, you get a lot of very fast and good progression with the kids that are learning these sports and they end up becoming better than the guys that are out on the mountains because they can do it every day. The 
But given the construction holdups, will his shop open on time? Both the shopping mall and Ski Dubai are supposed to open together in 10 weeks' time. But the mall is now three weeks behind schedule and Ski Dubai a month behind. The contractors are under pressure to catch up and the local weather is not helping the situation. Luckily, the sandstorm is blown over during the night. The weather's now perfect for strand jacking. The workers arrive at the site full of anticipation. Today is the day. Stress levels build as the new lift deadline approaches. Look at it now, it's, it's, it's not a breath, it's got it's a huge difference. Everyone's really looking forward to it, I tell you. They're really looking forward to it. The operation cannot go ahead without the Swiss Strandjack engineers, but they're stuck in a traffic jam. Finally, they show up. Tim is not sympathetic. Good luck than ever, eh? Our Swiss watch working perfectly. Swiss turn up at with 10 past seven, everyone else turns up at six. Well, 36 hour in European week, eh? Tim has to hand over control to what engineers call a lift master, Rajajanpal Damudaran. His friends call him Damo. It's a highly specialized job, and Damo's the most experienced lift master in Dubai. Before going ahead, all the chief engineers have to agree that the structure is ready to lift. We want to get a no objection. With the document signed, the responsibility is now Damo's. All right, Damo, it's all yours, mate. There you go. Most of the lift engineers are Hindu, and to placate the gods, they hold a religious ceremony before the lift can begin. All the senior engineers are asked to join in. Generally, in order to make sure that the lift goes smoothly, we conduct such kind of prayers, just uh, the belief, uh, to see that uh, no one to incident or accidents uh, happens. Uh, so it's just for safety. The head of construction, Tim Kelly, is also feeling anxious. There's a lot of things that can go wrong, and, and down the worst things is pick it fall. After hours of anxious anticipation, the lift starts. The hydraulic jacks hoist the strands inch by inch. The first fifth of an inch is the hardest. This is where all the stresses are at their most critical. It's been erected on a series of legs, if you like, and these legs are in a different profile or a different shape as to what it will be eventually. So as we start to lift it, the structure will, will move on its own accord and, and start to flex and bend and take its final position. The ends lift first. The rigid concrete and steel structure bends and sags slightly in the middle, so the center is last to rise up. Now the structure begins to make long, low groans. This is the slope flexing as it lifts off its supports. That's part of what we're looking for. We're trying to hear what, what, the, structure, what the structure does. It almost tells you what's going on. Good noise is sort of a squeak type, right? so it's a sort of stretching thing. Bad noise to crack. If you hear a bloody bad uh, thump, then that ain't good. The operation is going to plan, and the structure clears its supports. Then there's a problem. 
the Stranjack computer system suddenly crashes. The system regulates the jacks so that the structure stays level. If the lift is uneven, the 3,000-ton section will twist, buckle, and collapse. The Stranjack lift at Ski Dubai has come to a sudden halt. The engineers must find out what's caused the computer crash. How long will the 3,000-ton slope have to dangle in midair? If a strong wind suddenly develops, as they often do in Dubai, the structure is vulnerable. The massive surface area could become a huge sail swaying in the gusts and smash the Stranjack towers. The fault is basic, but it's taken an hour to locate. A vital power cable has failed. Relieved, Damo restarts the lift. But time is against him, and soon he's forced to break for the night. They've lost valuable time. Dawn. The lift starts early, and the lift team make good progress in the day. Uh, check one second at lifting frame points. But at 5.30 in the afternoon... It's the sound that Stranjack engineers dread. Everyone stops. They need to know what's happened. Is the structure safe? Are the jacking towers able to withstand the load? Have any steel strands failed and snapped? Are the jacks working properly? Liftmaster Rajajanpal Damudaran, Damo, halts the jacks and the operation. Night's approaching, and he orders checks on every load-bearing joint and weld. One may have burst and others could follow. It's better to leave the slope to the mercy of the wind than to press on with unsafe jacks. Every available engineer is assigned to checking. The fault must be found. This team examines the wind guides, the brackets that help keep the structure stable. One may have snapped. After an hour and a half, they find the fault. We took 100% load on um, early in the afternoon. The tower was shortened. So you can imagine all that load going onto the towers. The steel actually compresses slightly. What we have is serious connections onto the pylons because those towers at that end are quite high. What happened is that as it shortened, one of the sliding connections was supposed to slide sort of bound a bit and then later on just, just dropped it into its position. That was the noise we all heard and it's a big, it's a very sharp thud. You know, you've got 3,000 ton hanging on some strands here. Everyone's immediately thinking, uh, you know, we've got a well fire or something like that. Everyone starts running around. With all the checks completed, Damo can continue. Excellent progress is made, more than 98 feet. The final fractions of an inch are critical. Every strand must be at exactly the right level. There is no margin for error. is over and the team celebrates. Meanwhile, Ski Dubai chief executive Phil Taylor has to approve the centerpiece of the children's ice cave. This ice dragon is the world's largest cast acrylic sculpture. to acrylic is, is that when we actually looked at doing it in real ice and carving it, firstly the, the size of blocks we could get in Dubai are just very small, so it would be made up like a, a block kit. Yeah. But the other is that ice evaporates, and so um, even in two or three months, the claws, all the detail would have gone, and you'd just been left with little stubs and points. So in this way, it's, uh, it should look good all the time. Great. The wing, well, there's the wings. Yeah. Brilliant. It looks just like broken ice, which is exactly how it's supposed to look. What we want is a sharp edge, but it's not a dangerous. Yeah. Hey, 
Can you bring dead icicles? No. Oh, no. The time it's got a, a coat of frost on it and um, cool down, it'll just look brilliant and shine off. But the construction of Ski Dubai is now six and a half weeks behind schedule. At the best of times, our kings of construction will struggle to catch up. But it's not the best of times. Ski Dubai is hit by crisis after crisis. There's no need to make uh, horror stories. Uh, We're not making horror uh, stories. What you can do is try to run. Okay? I don't like her. The next phase of construction. Production director Stuart Ingram's day begins badly. The drag lift ramp that will haul skiers to the top of the black run is too steep and too short. This ramp was difficult and expensive to secure to the cladded walls. Now Stewart has to tear it down and rebuild it. I mean, you saw, you saw the work that was involved in putting the initial or the original steel support in. There's yeah. a considerable amount of work involved in doing it and now we need to replicate it. It's yet another delay that will cost time and money. The July temperature has risen to an unbearable 127.4 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not just the engineers who are behind schedule. The interior designers are too. They're carving artificial rock out of concrete, but it's setting fast. They have to work quickly. If they slow down, the concrete becomes too hard to shape. I'm in charge of covering up all the engineers' mess. And then I have to integrate all the styles to make the overall theme look good. I want people to go, wow, and really believe that they are in an ice cave and also have a good time. What will normally happen is that the art director, who is in charge of the whole thematic design, will give us a sketch photograph of what he is looking for. And our artists will simply interpret that and give him back exactly what he wants. They can basically have anything that they want. And so that's why on this particular project, you see so many different types of theming. But a lot of it is learnt on the job. It's not something you learn in a college, but it's very much an art form. Then, without warning, the power shuts down. The carver's tools are now useless and work has to stop. The problem we've got right now is, is you know, one of the phases has gone down with the power. So apart from working in this horrendous heat, we've now got no electricity. So the danger is that all the material you've sprayed on the wall is all now going to go off before we can start carving. Putting more people on the job isn't an option. It's a huge problem because the work that we do is an art. You know, we're, we're, we've got artists carving in wet cement and you cannot get more artists. You can't go to the market and say, give me 10 more artists. You've only got the team that we have. So it's an extremely difficult thing to catch up time. Ski Dubai is now eight weeks behind schedule. We're a little bit further behind schedule than we'd like to be. Um, the pressure on everyone now is just enormous. Um, there's so much at stake. I mean, there's huge penalties on the contractors if they're delayed, but also for the retailers. They, uh, they've got their season's collections in. If we don't open in time, um, there's huge penalties for everybody. Henri Perpredu, the French engineer in charge of installing the travelators on the nursery slope, is one of the most popular characters on the Ski Dubai construction site. We are in the middle of placing the travelators that will carry the Dubai skiers. Yes, we do have some problems as we are more used to working in the mountains, where it is much cooler. Here it's terrible. 50 degrees. You can see how we are sweating. Unfortunately, it doesn't get any cooler. 
His enthusiasm makes the July heat just about bearable. The humidity is in the high 90s and the temperature is touching 130 degrees. Quickly. It's a moving walkway with rubber strips, so there is good grip and no possibility of the skiers sliding backwards. We've designed these machines with as many safety features as possible for Dubai. The people here are not used to skis and are not used to this method of transport. So we thought it is very important to include as many safety features as possible. Henry is subjecting the travelator to far more weight than it will have to carry when the ski resort is opened. Then the passengers will be more spaced out because they'll be wearing skis, and many will be children. The ski instructors can easily monitor the speed from very slow right up to the maximum permit. Like everyone else, Henry is behind schedule, but he's still energetic and optimistic and hopes to catch up. The next engineering challenge at Ski Dubai is to get the cable lift up and running. The cable needs to be wound round the pulleys. The engineer in charge of the chairlift, Christian Chapelo, wants to start work. Christian's team needs four walkie-talkies to complete the job, but they've only been given three. Christian doesn't have one and can't direct the action. Work has to stop. He's unhappy. J'ai pas la radio. Donc on peut pas dérouler. C'est très simple et très compliqué à la fois. But miracles can happen. Project director Stuart Ingram has managed to locate the scaffolding needed for Christian's 200-foot platform. Now armed with his walkie-talkie, Christian can start. Okay, Alain, I'm going to go to the left. Come on, let's go. Be careful. But Christian's not happy for long. Now there's a problem with the winch and cable drum. The clamps supporting the drum are too small. The drum is now unstable, and if they carry on, it'll topple over. Christian has had enough. All these problems mean that Ski Dubai is now even further behind schedule. The teams of instructors and support staff have arrived to find a ski resort with no snow. For the first week, there's much to do. All the skis, helmets, boots, and poles have to be prepared and sorted. In their second week, two of the snowboard instructors decide if they can't ski on snow, then sand will just have to do. And Dubai has lots of sand. Desert is awesome. There's no way to describe it. You've got to be here to, to, uh, to appreciate it, really. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. Snowboarding, a uh, great experience, certainly. Yeah, I thought the sandboard was pretty cool. There. It's a bit slower than, sat than snow, obviously, but it tastes a little bit different as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Back at Ski Dubai, the welding for the cooling system has become an issue once again. Ammonia is used to cool the glycol antifreeze, which is then piped under the snow. The ammonia system failed several tests and the problems are now being corrected. But none of the 4,500 welds in the glycol system has yet been inspected. And after the experience with the ammonia welds, Malcolm Clulo is concerned. There is a life safety issue with the glycol as well, because although it's not a volatile refrigerant, it doesn't boil as a gas. This glycol it can be down as low as minus 25 centigrade, which is 55 degrees C below skin temperature. So it would be like pouring water at 85 centigrade on your, on your skin, which would cause a burn. You know, we've got 10-inch uh, pipes out there full of glycol with the static head from the whole slope on them. So you know, you, if you've got a major break, there could be a huge fountain pouring over the general public and someone could get killed. Because they've had so many failures on the ammonia, it's the same welders that are working on the glycol. So they're not just doing a few welds bad, they must be doing all the welds bad, you must suspect. As it happens, the welds are fine, but as Malcolm doesn't know it yet, he's still highly suspicious. Meanwhile, the shopping mall is a month behind schedule, but 160 stores are opening tomorrow. Shariar Kojiste is in his extreme sports shop. Stress levels are high. There's much to do. It's one of too late. You gotta call him now. No, but well, this is supposed to be checker plate. How many sandals will go on this? Someone tell me. Darren, what are you now? No, but listen, are you gonna set up the sound system in here? The, the sprinkler guy also has to come and straighten up the sprinkler. The, the, splinter, the, the sprinkler system is not aligned very well. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I need stuff to be straight. So that, that has to be fixed. There's some lighting issues that, that, that the guys have to come back and, and fix again, but that'll happen probably after the opening. Would have liked to have opened with a perfect store, but these things sometimes don't go your way. But um, overall, we're very, very happy, but there's a lot of things to be done yet. Sharia and his staff are not the only people feeling the pressure. The main road in and out of the mall is only half finished, and project director Stuart Ingram is organizing the final push for completion. No, no, this is um, quite a common occurrence on the last day. We're basically got a, a very labor-intensive activity, which is block paving. Uh, and the thing is, you can just throw hundreds of guys at it. So literally, we've had probably 200, 300 guys on this for the last three days this area all the way from the car park ground making the final link you'd be amazed four or five hours of cleaning road markings on the top it looked like a finished job the mall is almost finished but ski dubai is nearly 12 weeks behind schedule any outstanding technical problems must be resolved and quickly this calls for another meeting with the contractors. Yeah, we've seen so much evidence of bad fit up on, on welds. Inspect looked at the photographs that we got on the ammonia set, uh, fit up, and his view was he would have rejected 95% of them. The fires, the fires, the fires, and 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 the you know, when, when you find problems as a consultant, it makes you think, well, if that's a problem, where else are the problems? Yeah. Glycol. We need to know if there's a problem or not. We're talking around the table at this present time, and we don't know if we've got a problem. However, based on the evidence that we've seen on some of the ammonia pipe, where we have to get a retest and, and re-weld, then that's where we are, and that's the confidence. We need to build that confidence and have a look. And in doing so, the best thing we can do is go out and represent, do some representative sampling. To make sure that the cooling system is safe, Malcolm and Stewart want the contractor to test 10% of the welds by x-ray. The welds are in fact good, but Malcolm and Stewart don't know it yet, and still make the contractor sweat. I would say 97% of the welding has been completed. And so you're, you're, what you're saying implies that we're not doing it. 
So, no, 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 I just... No. It's not a question in people's ability or anything like that. It's just technical issues that we want to have closed. I mean, one thing also, you, you, you will have to accept is that this budget cannot stop security. That's not on the agenda today, though. That's not on the agenda. Oh, well, 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 that's, well, that's, well, that's part of the... the, the that's the, an assumption, Wally, that you're, you're assuming that you're going to have a lot of people. Look, if you imagine... No, you imagine you're 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 forget September. Forget October. You're driving for a white Christmas. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We suspect the contractor is putting up this shield because he knows full well that we'll have the same level of failure on the glycol pipework that we've had on the ammonia pipework, at least, which would mean we'll immediately require him to go to a 100% x-ray test on 3,000 odd welds, and that will take a huge amount of time and a huge amount of cost. Ski Dubai is already seriously over budget and behind schedule. All the stores in the new mall are depending on the resort to attract record numbers of tourists and sightseers with money to spend. Structurally, Ski Dubai is almost complete. All it needs is snow, 6,000 tons of it. That'll take a month to produce. But first, the technical problems have to be solved. The French chairlift engineers will soon be finished, and all that remains for them to do is to attach the chairs to the cable. is hit with another time-consuming delay. Some of the pipes buried under concrete will have to be dug up and replaced. Flexible rubber pipes laid beneath the concrete base of the slope will carry the glycol, which will maintain the snow at the right temperature. Malcolm Clulo's original specification stated that these rubber hoses should have no joints. What happens is if you get a glycol leak in the middle of the slope, it runs underneath the snow, melts out a huge pattern that, that widens out from, from a small leak to, to maybe 20 metres wide as it runs down the slope. Um, and it melts all the snow underneath that. So the snow starts to implode and it destroys the structure. So if you get a leak of glycol in the middle of the slope, it's a complete shutdown. A big partial meltdown and restart, which would be economically disastrous. you basically got your connector here. Yeah. So I don't know what they can, you know, because we were looking at one stage of just making it lo a longer piece of pipe there. Probably. Malcolm is convinced that these joints will leak when buried in the ice. And although he's used joints that are approved by the pipe supplier, although that the pipe shrinks away from the concrete, and leaves a small gap, that will fill with ice and it will physically lock up the pipe. And what happens if you've got a, a compression joint, you could find that this piece of pipe starts to contract as it cools and pulls the joint that's locked on the other side with ice and it'll just pull the joint apart. No matter how strongly and how tightly it's tightened up, it'll physically just pull it apart. Now the power of ice is absolutely enormous. There are several hundred of these joints on the project in different areas that he's now got to order some longer pieces of pipe for from Europe, dig out the concrete, throw them away and start again on, on those sections. The contractor must replace these pipes quickly, but the manufacturer is slow to send the replacements. There is another delay. <laughs> The shopping mall has to open without Ski Dubai. The owners have decided that it'll be a low-key affair and save the big celebration for when Ski Dubai opens. But Shariar Kajeste wants some of his best future customers to open his new store, and a formal ribbon-cutting ceremony just isn't their style.
Back at Ski Dubai, engineers have been testing the cooling system. We've had our share of challenges, uh, particularly on the technical side. Uh, the systems have been tested on, off, switch them off, make more adjustments. Uh, checking the welding, we've done considerable testing, pressure testing, vacuum testing on the, on the welding, so we can be absolutely certain. This is not the kind of thing that once it's fully operational, you just switch it off, melt down 6,000 tons of snow, and make a few adjustments. We have to be absolutely perfect when we go sub-zero. And we're ready, we're at that stage now. Finally, all the technical problems at Ski Dubai are solved. It's three months late, but snow has finally started to fall in the desert. It's just amazing. I mean, it's just fantastic that it's finally happening. It is snowing in Dubai. They said it was impossible to build a ski resort with real snow in this searing heat. But engineers like Stuart Ingram, Malcolm Clulo, Tim Kelly, and Philip Taylor found a way.